Welcome to the I Speak Fundy Biosphere series. We want to become more fluent when speaking about the Fundy Biosphere. In this series, we'll be covering everything from the sciences of ecology and forestry to climate action and even hiking, exploring, and tourism. Join us as together we learn how truly special the Fundy Biosphere is. Welcome to the Fundy Biosphere I Speak series. I am Ben Cummings, and today I have with me Caleb Grant from the Cliffs of Fundy Geopark. Caleb, how you doing? Doing well. How are you, Ben? I'm doing fantastic. So why don't you tell us a little bit, for people who aren't familiar, why don't you talk a little bit about what the Cliffs of Fundy Geopark is? Sure. So the Cliffs of Fundy Geopark is a newly, uh, newly designated UNESCO Global Geopark uh, that's located in Mi'kmaq, the ancestral uh, and unceded territory of the Mi'kmaq people. The geopark runs along the north shore of the Minas Basin in the Bay of Fundy, what we call now call Nova Scotia, and it stretches all the way from Lower Truro in the east to the rocky shores of Cape Chignecto in the west, wow. along a 165 kilometer stretch of coastline there. So. A lot of driving for some of us on staff. But it's okay. <laughs> uh, so, so what is what is your area of expertise then? Absolutely. So I am the I'm the geoscientist here at the Geopark. So my specialty is rocks, uh, and I'm a, I come from a hard rock geology background. I was I recently completed my master's degree, and through that work I during my time there at Acadia University doing that, I spent a lot of time doing research up in the Cape Breton Highlands, actually, in Northeastern, all the Cabot Trail area. Really gorgeous rocks, lots of hills, lots of alders, but I'm really excited to be kind of making the transition back into public communication and public education field now that I'm working here at the Geopark. That's really cool because uh, geology is something that I really didn't study. My background is in biology and specifically animal biology. Mm -hmm. So hearing from and talking to a geologist is kind of cool, but you may need to dumb some things down for me because I don't, I know very little about rocks. I taught a little bit of geology poorly when I was in university, worked for Worlds Unbound a little bit, but oh, so let's, mm -hmm. uh, what are some really cool rocks or geological formations that we see in the Fundy Biosphere or in the uh, Cliffs of Fundy Geopark? Sure, so the Cliffs of Fundy Geopark, the whole, the whole, the big part of the Geopark has been storytelling and the rocks within the Geopark tell a really cool story about the, uh, are you familiar with the supercontinent Pangea? Somebody yep. says Pangea, yeah? Okay, so the supercontinent Pangea, just for anybody who may not be familiar, is just the idea of all the continents around the world that we know today uh, were at one point together. And so we were actually abutted up against like Europe and, and the, the Northwest coast of Africa. Morocco was actually just offshore of like the South Shore of Nova Scotia. Uh, and so the, the Geopark, the Geopark actually tells that story and displays it, it, this coming together of the supercontinent Pangea and the formation of the Appalachian Mountains 350 to 300 million years ago. It shows that story really perfectly, but it's also on the flip side, 100 million years after that, around 200 million years ago, uh, we see the pulling apart or the separation of that, of the, the supercontinent Pangea and the formation of, of the world that we know today, the birth of the Atlantic Ocean. Uh, and so a lot of the cliffs, a lot of them, when these continents pulled apart, there was, lot, there was lava that's kind of spewed out between these two. And a lot of that is kind of preserved in the cliffs, like Cape Door, Cape Split across the bay from us. But uh, all of these dark rocks um, that make up a lot of the cliffs that define the area record that story. And so it's really cool to kind of take a walk back in time as you're standing out of the lighthouse looking at the tides. And then now, of course, we've got World high, the world's highest tides in the minus basin that really kind of preserve that and, and create all these awesome like coastal viewscapes that we get. That's super cool. Where, where is some of the best places to sort of go visit and to be able to see these different, like the separation other, I mean, of course the entire coastline you could view it, but is there any specific places that like you could go to and be like, look at this? Uh, sure. So there's a great, there are a couple of really kind of exceptional and visitor ready spots to go. The ones that jump to mind, if you can think of anywhere that's got a lighthouse along the shore, you're probably going to find it. 
Um, but some of the ones, uh, Five Islands Provincial Park is probably number one. You kind of you walk down and through the Provincial Park, day use park, anybody could get there. Uh, if you go at low tide, you got to be careful about going at low tide because the tide does come back up pretty quick and you can get caught. <laughs> Definitely not speaking from experience. Uh, uh, but yeah, and so there's a, there's a fantastic uh, cliff side that you see there where you can see the the sedimentary rocks or the rocks that formed kind of prior to the separation of these continents. And then you can see the hard line in the top of the cliff where these, where these black volcanic rocks uh, cap the cliff. And it's kind of cool, very, very striking thing to look at. Other than that at Five Islands, um, another one that's really well known is the lighthouse at Cape Door. Um, and so that's down, um, between Spencer's Island and, and Advocate Harbor, you drive out to Cape Door, another another road right out, anybody can get down to it. And you really get the vertical, just the exact, you get the perspective of how much lava erupts when continents separate. So those two spots are fantastic. Uh, I definitely recommend anybody coming to the area to stop there and just check them out. And then you mentioned the, the striations a little bit and some of the, the things that you see. And I, I recognize that having been to, like you say, some lighthouses. And I visited a bunch recently, been to uh, Cape and Rage and Quaco Head. So you can see those if you're able to get out. Sometimes you're up on a cliff, so you can't really see the cliff itself. But what are, what are some of the sediments that you do see in these places? Sure. So sed sediment, a lot of I guess that's, a, that's that that might be a poor wording to speak to a geologist. So some of it's sediment, <laughs> some of it's rock, some of it's mineral. So so walk <laughs> us through some of the stuff that we do see. No problem. So the 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 way it usually turns out is that most lighthouses were always built on hard rock or stable rock, and so they don't they weren't actually generally you don't see them built like on soft sediment that's going to erode. That's why it's a big issue in the bay right now is coastal erosion. We can touch on that later. But uh, usually lighthouses are always kind of constructed on these hard rocks. And this in the Fundy, in the Bay of Fundy region, those are either rocks like out of the Cobequid Highlands or down in uh, like southern New Brunswick, you have all sorts of other older, harder rocks. Um, but when you see layers in it, especially in like the Fundy Geopark, these are layers or flows within this, this lava that, that once kind of erupted in bay region um, and so what you're looking at is you're looking at sequential like you're looking at a storybook in time almost like layers almost like the rings of a tree you're kind of looking back in time as you look down through those layers but uh it's kind of hard to imagine that those were once lava that were flowing on the surface wow. so that's some of it otherwise other than that sedimentary rocks if you do see some of those that were just that were layers uh of, of kind of eroded material either off a mountain or running through a river uh, that have just found their way down to either a lake uh, or found their way to the ocean and have been laid down in, in layers. And again, same thing, the rings of a tree layer on layer on layer stepping back through time. That's really cool. I didn't know that, that uh, I guess I knew about trees, but I didn't know that for a cliff, seeing those striations and being able to see those, you can tell as a geologist or even somebody who may even have a little bit of experience with recognizing what these are, you can tell, okay, here's a period in time. That's really yeah. cool. Absolutely. Now you alluded to it a little bit, the uh, coastal erosion. Talk to us about what, what's happening there. Well, it's, I mean, it's, <laughs> It's not, a, it's not a situation that is unique to the Bay of Fundy by any stretch, but with the world's highest tides comes a very rapid uh, amount and a lot of coastal erosion that's been happening. I mentioned Five Islands Provincial Park just a few minutes ago, um, but I know this spring they lost a section of like 10 meters off of part wow. of the bay. Like 30 feet of bank just whoosh, slipped down to the beach and was gone overnight kind of thing. So this has been, this is a huge issue, especially anybody who lives in the upper bay of Fundy. And these are in rocks, like I mentioned, these soft sediments that are really typical of the upper bay of Fundy. Um, and there's a lot of coastal erosion. People who have cottages on the waterfront, there, there's a serious threat for people losing those cottages uh, and losing a lot of their land there. So it's, it, it's, it's an ongoing issue. And I mean, I don't know, climate change. I mean, we've had tra traditionally 
shorter and, and less harsh uh, winters in the last few years, um, as well as more severe weather. There's there's no one party. There's no one uh, cause that you can that you can really attribute to this to this accelerated coastal erosion. It's it's it, it is what it is. It's climate change. It's just, I think. I think it's something that people don't, we sort of take for granted that we have the, um, the, the coast itself and the highest tides in the world. And we're like, that's cool. But you don't really recognize how violent that can be. And I know specifically, if you go to the flower pot rocks at Hopewell, you can see, and I remember being there as a kid and they were completely different. Absolutely. And some of them have disappeared because over time, like they're being eroded and they're disappearing. So like you say, people who are either living on the coast or things that you enjoy uh, are just falling into the ocean. Is that something that could happen to, I would presume that lighthouses are a little more stable being built on rock, but is that a risk that, hey, we're losing parts of our province basically to the ocean? <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, it, it, <laughs> it's a very, very real threat between coastal erosion and rising sea level. These are these are kind of paramount uh, issues all along the coast and things that are coming up more and more frequently kind of thing. Like, yeah. like the, the, the old Acadian dikes that really kind of that characterize the landscape um, all around all around the maritimes uh, that are now being washed over, that are now being breached by the tides. Um, these lighthouses falling into the falling into the sea. There are great examples of all sorts of structures that have just been reclaimed by the wow. sea. A great one you mentioned the Hopewell flower pots uh, in the in the Fundy Geo Park. There are also flower pot rocks around the Five Islands Provincial Parks and in the uh, adjacent community of Soli Cove. Uh, and I remember hearing a story uh, just a couple of weeks ago, actually. These flower pots are stood off the off the bank of probably I don't know what 50, 60 feet. And I remember hearing a story of a woman who used to ride her bicycle as a little girl out onto what is now a flower pot, what used to then just be the bank. Wow. And so the coast, it, and when people come to visit the Bay of Fundy, they see they see these fantastic, like really carved tidal landscapes. But for people that live here, the real the reality is that the bay is changing and every day that you go down to it every day i go down to the beach i'm on a different beach it's never the same twice never the yeah. same twice in a row. so it's <laughs> ever changing that's really cool i never even thought about that that as things get eroded or as the cliffs get eroded your sediment and the sand that even you walk on with every tide would be completely different it's changing and evolving absolutely that's really cool. Awesome, Caleb. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much for the conversation. I'm sure we'll have lots to talk about as I research a little bit of geology, maybe learn a little more so I can be a little more intelligent next time. <laughs> but where can people learn a little bit more about the Fundy Geopark other than going to visit? What, where can we uh, learn more about the organization? Absolutely. So we've got a website, uh, www.fundygeopark.ca. Anybody can go over there and learn all about the geopark. Uh, and from that website, you can see we've got there are tons of other organizations. The geopark really just scratches the surface uh, for what there is in the Bay of Fundy region. Um, so there are lots of museums that touch on a lot of the cultural history here. Right in, I'm in our offices in the Burt right now, but there is just up the road here touching on some of the really significant cultural uh cultural history of the area is Mi'kmaq way to Burt uh, that that tracks the one of the oldest human habitat the oldest human settlements in northeastern North America dating back wow. to like 13,500 years ago so that's a huge thing and a big storytelling aspect and so keep your anybody who's interested keep your eyes out for things coming out of Mi'kmaq way to Burt um but other than that, yeah, follow us on Facebook, Instagram at Fundy Geopark. We try and be as active as we can. And right now we are leading free guided tours uh, every Wednesday morning uh, through the summer to a couple of to a couple of special spots um, along the bay. And people can find all that information on the social media, the website. Uh, they can come hang out with me if they're in the bay and if they're in the Geopark area. Yeah, you guys have been sharing some awesome stuff on Facebook and Instagram. So I uh, would encourage anybody who is listening or watching to be able to uh, go check that out and maybe even go on a tour if you can. Thank you so much, Caleb. We really appreciate it. All right. Thanks very much, Ben. And thank you to everybody listening or watching. We will see you next week or in the next episode. 
For more information about the Fundy Biosphere or to contact us, you can find us on social media or visit us at fundy-biosphere.ca.